Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to thank all my colleagues at, um, at UC Davis um, for all the work that they're, they're doing. We actually started working on developing um, a college and career measure um, in 2014, and I turned to Michael several times to help um, with those efforts there. So, and I'm thrilled uh, about all the work that they're doing um, regarding um, the CCI and all the um, efforts we're making um, at the department um, to expand on the CCI. So they asked me to provide some observations about um, the CCI and where we're um, headed uh, for the Department of Education. So as I mentioned before, we actually started working on the CCI in 2014. With the passage of ESSA, uh, we now have about three quarters of the states who now have a college and career um, readiness indicator um, in their accountability system. And I will say, we all probably, well, I know for sure that we all have different um, definitions of what it means to be college and career ready. Um, we also have the recent uh, reauthorization of Perkins, which really does provide a strong focus on students being college and career ready. So there is not only interest in California to try to focus on getting students prepared for success after high school, but there is a focus nationwide on this. Um, so I think it's really important um, to, to realize that when we are looking at the CCI, we are looking at multiple ways that schools can demonstrate that their students are prepared to be successful when they leave high school. And the original intent of the CCI was really our, our desire was to put something out there that would help schools and districts rethink their high school curriculum for students. And hopefully, close the gap between those students of, um, who are traditionally underperforming um, compared to those students who, um, who are traditionally high performing. So that was the original intent of the CCI. Um, if anyone ever listens to the State Board of Education when we were talking about the CCI, Sue Burr would often reference um, the CCI as something like the um, good housekeeping seal of approval. And so there was a lot of support um, from the State Board on implementing um, the CCI. But as you can see from the data that was um, displayed um, here today, um, California really does have a lot of work ahead of us in order to make sure that all of our students are prepared for success after high school. So currently, there are only about 44% of our students who are considered prepared on the CCI. And of course, just like all the data that we're shown here today, there's a big difference between um, uh, various student groups. So Asian and white student groups are performing much better and are being uh, considered prepared based on the CCI compared to, um, um, compared to English learners, um, especially compared to foster students um, and, and students with disabilities. Uh, foster students, only 13% are prepared. Students with disabilities, only 11%. So there is a huge gap that we have um, um, among our student groups that needs to be closed. Those students who are enrolled for eight semesters or more align pretty much with the CCI on considering who's really prepared. So I think I also want to address some of the things that I see that's happening in California regarding preparing students for success after high school. You know, I have a couple of different work groups that have been helping me with um, trying to get um, new indicators into the CCI. You know, now it is currently um, have a lot of um, college indicators and, and very few career indicators. So I have um, a CCI work group and an alternative schools task force that have been assisting with trying to um, determine um, which career measures we should be adding to the CCI. And we are, um, of course, working with our CalPAS people to collect that data. But I think it's really important, I, I wanna point out that the conversations that we're having with our CCI work group and our alternative schools um, task force has changed substantially over the last year. So when we first started talking about career measures, um, there was um, a desire to collect a lot of different things. But now when we're talking about, should we put these new career measures into the CCI, the conversations changed quite a bit. 
So our CCI people have really stressed that they are working really hard in their districts to make their students are prepared and they do not want to water down the CCI. Sure that the focus maintains that all students, regardless of who they are and, re and regardless of which programs they participate in, should have an opportunity um, to be prepared. Uh, there was a big example of how one district is really focusing on their students with disabilities and getting them into career pathways and completing the career pathways because they think that is a really important um, piece of, uh, it's very important for these students to participate um, in these pathways. And of course, as you know, if you participate in the CT CTE pathway, you can only be prepared um, if you complete the pathway and do something else like complete A through G. So the conversations among our task force members and our work groups has changed substantially over the past year, really focusing more on rigor. I have been doing a lot of presentations out in the field. Um, we, um, we keep track of all the, um, all the um, presentations that we do so we can um, give that to the board. You'll see that in all our board items. But you know, every two months, I think we um, have contact with about at least 2,000 2, um, people who are participating in our webinars or who are attending um, some of our uh, presentations. And what I've learned from them when we um, talk about the implementation of the CCI is that a lot of districts are putting systems in place so they can track students to make sure that they're on track to completing things like A through D or completing their CTE pathways. They're really trying to figure out ways of um, having students get greater access to college courses. Right now, a very small percentage of students really have this really hard at community colleges so that uh, more students can have access. They're thinking about distance learning. Um, they're putting a, a lot of things um, in place to give that access. They're really trying to expand um, those students who are taking AP courses. And of course, that means providing a lot of extra support to students who may need it in order to be successful in those courses. Um, there is also um, an effort to um, um, increase um, the types of courses that are being um, offered in alternative schools. Normally, alternative schools didn't, did not um, offer um, things like CTE um, pathway completion, especially in the juvenile court schools. But there is a bigger effort to try to get more of these courses into um, alternative schools so those students can be prepared as well. And I think a lot of comprehensive high schools are really trying to help students at the comprehensive high schools to do credit recovery. We see more and more um, comprehensive high schools doing credit recovery instead of sending their students to alternative schools. So I think that is another area where um, there is a greater focus on making sure that all students are going to be successful when they complete high school. Hopefully over the um, coming years, um, to come, we'll see more and more students who are, uh, who are prepared to be successful when they leave high school. And with that, um, I will um, turn it over to our moderator.